Hello there, this is Dimitris Christou and I'm back with another Blender video tutorial. And for this video tutorial I'll be building today's uh, scene from my blog from graphicsdaily.blogspot.com And I'm pretty sure that you'll enjoy the final result of this one. Now I have the default cube selected, I'll hit the tab key to switch from object edit mode and hit the S key to scale it down. Let's scale it down a lot at uh, 0.2 on the X, Y and Z axis. I'll hit tab to switch back to object mode and move over to the object modifiers. Click this little icon for the modifiers and I'm going to click add modifier and I'll add an array. For this one I will, I will uh, keep the relative offset checked and set to 1 for the X axis. I'll just increase the count. Let's set it up to say 10. Okay. Now time for the second modifier, I'm going to add a simple deform modifier, let's select it. I'll set the simple deform to do some bending on the array. And what I'll also do on the array is uh, click merge so that Blender treats the array object as one object. And the simple deform, let's set the deform angle, let's set it up to say 120 or something. Okay, looking good. Now I will need an empty. I'll hit Shift A and add empty and plain axis. I'll move over to the empty options and increase the size. Let's set it up from 1 to 5. Again, select the object and move to the modifiers and click add modifier and add a secondary. For this array, I will uncheck relative offset check object offset and as you can imagine the object will be the array will use to offset the the clones will be the empty all right i'll increase the count let's set it up to 10 as well and you can see a thing because we haven't moved or applied any rotation on the empty here let's move it a bit let's move it at about one on the x-axis all right and let's add some rotation let's add some y rotation okay i think we're good at about here all right let's also move it on the y-axis slightly let's set it to 0 0.5 okay so you see what we're getting what I'll need now is another empty, hit shift A and add empty and plane axis. This empty will also be bigger, let's set the size up to 15. And I'm increasing the size so I can easily select my empties and modify the position and the rotation when our object here will become bigger and all. Now back to the object modifiers and we will need another array. Let's click array, uncheck relative, and check object offset, and select the second empty. Let's increase the count a bit, let's set it up to 8. And select the empty, time to move it. Okay, let's see, let's move it on the z-axis, let's move it 1 on the z-axis. Okay, and add some rotation. You can see that we start getting some interesting results here. Okay, I like what I see. All right, time for another empty. Hit Shift A and add empty and plain axis, and this will hopefully be our final empty. I'll set the size up to 30, and this is pretty big. Okay, and again, selecting the object and back to the modifiers, and we need a final array. Let's put it here and uncheck relative offset, check object offset, and we will select the third empty, which is actually empty.002. Okay. Increase the count, let's set it up to. I want to have this one to be pretty big, not that big. Okay, at about 24. All right. Now let's select the uh, final. MT, MT.002, and let's hit G and X. Let's grab it on the X axis. 
Okay. I'm also going to apply some rotation to it, not on the Y. Let's see some rotation on the X. Yep. And some rotation on the Z. I think this one looks pretty interesting at about here. All right. I think I'll move it further. Let's see. Let's expand it. As you can imagine, you can clearly build your own scenes. And actually, if you start following this video tutorial, I, I really doubt it that you end up having the same result. But let's move on. Okay, looking good. I'm giving it some room here. All right. Now I'm going to try and find a nice angle for the scene here. I think we're good at about here. Okay. Now control Alt and Zero on my camera to position it, to position the camera at about the place I was looking before. Let's round up the camera values here so we can easily modify them later on. Okay. The exhortation to 195. Let's set the Y rotation to 0 and the Z to 15. And let's add some Y rotation slight. And then. Okay. And this is what I wanted to do. All right. Now we have the camera selected. I'll move over to the camera options and I'll bring the focal length down just by a tiny bit. Let's set it to 30. All right. Okay, looking good. We have our array here doing its thing. I'm going to select it and add a final modifier. And the final modifier will be a subdivision surface modifier. Okay, the view is set to 1 and the render is set to 2, which is exactly how we want it to be. And final thing I'll do for my mask here, for my object here, is under the shading, click smooth. All right. Now I'll change Blender Render to Cycle Render. All right. And move over to the materials. We have a material here in place. I'll click Use Nodes and change the surface from Diffuse BSDF to Glass. All right. I'll change the glass color. Let's make it nice bright blue one okay and I'll also bring the index of refraction down let's set it down to 1.35 all right moving over to the world options I'll click use nodes and let's make the background color brighter I think we're good at about here at about 0 0.4 for every color okay now I'll move to the render options and of course I'll change the device to GPU compute so my so Blender here can use my graphics card to build the, the render. I'll increase the render resolution slightly and move down to sampling and increase the render samples as well. Let's set it up to 80 and let's render an image to see how this one looks. All right. When building your own scene, just make sure you won't go crazy with the R accounts, because this will and can bring the faces to a pretty big number, and you might end up uh, having trouble uh, putting your graphics card to work with your scene if the geometry is. Uh, too big for your memory to handle and as you can imagine this can be easily animated you can animate the empty position and rotation and you can also animate and this will produce a nice effect you can also change the deform angle here for the simple deform modifier and this will also look nice now you can see the result here what I want to do is 
try and make this one slightly more dense. Let's increase some R account. Let's set this one to OK, 9, 10. And as I said before, this also increases the poly count. You can see that I'm having 490,000 faces for this one. So it looks good. What I'll do is let's add one R here. All right. And I render a final image so we can see we've got. So this is it. You can easily use your own lighting. You can easily use your own materials and your own colors for this one. And I would really suggest animating this because this will look pretty interesting. So this is the technique behind today's image that will be uploaded on my blog at graphicsdaily.blogspot.com. This is Dimitris Christou. Let's take a look at the render and thanks for watching.